for a number of years now, I have been rescuing plants. So pretty much every plant in my garden was either started from seed or was a plant rescue. One of the most notable rescues is our willow hair that we call Bob, who was left out with his roots out all winter. And we took him back and replanted him and he's beautiful. And sorry about the traffic noise. We also rescued his sister Wanda, <laughs> which we have right here. And I live in a construction zone now. So yesterday when we were going for a walk, we found an old abandoned gravel pit where people dump off their garden waste. There we found some more neglected plants that need rehoming. And so I'll take you along with me and show you what I do to rescue plants, which saves a lot of money. It's quite easy to do. You can have a beautiful garden from, you know, seed grown plants, which are very economical, as well as roadside rescues. And these plants deserve a nice new home. And today we found some of those uh, abandoned plants that we're going to go and do a rescue. So all you really need to have with you is a shovel or any kind of digging tool. I have one of these bags here, a collapsible bag to put the plants in or some sort of container. I'm going to take a pair of gloves with me and we'll load up the vehicle and head on over to rescue a few of those plants. So as you can see, this is sort of a dump off spot for garden waste. Um, people have grass clippings here and that sort of thing. And, uh, I was walking around through here. You can see straight ahead. There are, well, there's some lilies here that we don't know what kind they are and they're just right out of the ground. What a crime. So we're going to take those. There's some sort of shrub here. Are we alive? We got some hostas. This roots are all out. We're going to take that. It looks quite healthy. And there's probably a lot more around here, but that's all I'm going to take for today. We have quite a bit of comfrey over here as well. This whole background there is comfrey. So I'm just going to get my shovel and dig these plants up and bring them home. Now ideally you shouldn't do this on a warm sunny day. Sometimes it is what it is. The weather's what it is. So I'll show you what I do when we get them and take them back home to give them the best chance of survival. So what I'm doing back here now is I went through my pot collection and uh, looked for a few pots with a similar size to the root balls. I'm just going to take a look at these now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the roots and pull out any weeds or grass and look for any signs of insects or disease. That's why I don't want to put them in my garden right away. I want to put them in a quarantine area for a couple of weeks and monitor them and see if they have any kind of disease or anything. So that's what we're going to do now. I'll start with the lilies because they're the easiest. And then we'll go ahead and pot them up, give them a good soaking with water, and keep them in the shade for a few weeks. And then we'll see how they do. And if they're good, they're ready to plant in the garden. So here we have this cluster of lilies. And it has a terribly dried root ball and they, we don't know what color they're going to be or anything like that. We want to start pulling away and looking for just the root of the lily and getting all the grass and other sorts of weeds and stuff out of there. So we have one lily root here and it's very very dry. But all of my lilies came from the same situation as this. And once they're given a little TLC, they tend to come right back around. So just pull them apart. And we don't want any of that grass or anything in there. There we go. 
and each lily should have a little fan like this. Clean everything out of those roots and just look how dry they are what a crime so this is gonna take a little while and if you pull off the top like I just did just fine just keep the root and um, the lily will grow back from the root so I'm gonna continue on doing this until I have them all cleaned out from the grass and then we're going to pot these up. Now that we have the daylilies done, I have to water them yet. Uh, this little shrub that I found here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to clean it up and now I like to prune it right away. So I see a part of the root cracked off here so you want to cut that clean on a 45 and cut off any little dead branches you could shape it too now if you wanted but I'm not going to shape it I'm just going to cut off what's dead This is a cute little shrub here. Looks like a little bonsai. Okay, so we got it pretty clean up here. Take this one off. This one. Okay. And now we're ready to pot this one up too. So I'll get some nice new soil and uh, put it in a pot. And then we'll pot this little guy up as well. So this is just fresh from my compost. I want to plant him about as deep as his roots are. I'll go grab another shovel full of soil and pop in there. There we go. There's a little earthworm there. You go back down there. All right, number two. Now, it's for the big hosta. This one's gonna be heavy and difficult, so I'll probably do this one off camera, but I'll show you when it's all done. So here they are all potted up. Can you believe somebody just threw these away? Look at the size of this thing. So the next thing we're gonna do is give them a good, very, very deep watering. We wanna put Lots of water till you see it flowing out of the bottom. You don't want to be too aggressive. This is my new, I don't particularly like this watering one. There we go. You want to see the water pool on the top there, and especially with these lilies because the roots were so dry. We're going to keep them watered. Luckily, we're calling for rain now after today so that's why I didn't mind going and getting these really shouldn't do it in really hot dry weather if it's going to be long-term hot dry weather so you just really give these a good soaking as long as the water percolates down I keep tending to add a little bit more, so I see a pool a little on the top. And now this one. With hostas, I don't really like to get too much water on the leaves, so we'll 
focus on the roots all the way around. And there we have it. We had a beautiful morning rescuing three gorgeous plants that were just left and neglected in an old gravel pit thrown out with garden waste. These plants would be very expensive to buy. I'm interested to see what color the lilies are going to be. Even if they're just orange or yellow. Still, you know, it's free plants for the garden. Didn't take all that much time. I mean, if you had to go to a garden center and pick up plants, it's a little bit messier. Such a waste to uh, find these beautiful plants and, uh, you know, see them just eventually someone else would dump more garbage on top of them. So now we have three beautiful plants here. In a couple of weeks, if all looks well with them, they will go into my garden. So thank you for joining me on this plant rescue. I, uh, I've never really shown you one before, although I've told you that I do rescue plants, and I've been rescuing plants for 15 years. Pretty easy thing to do. And I, the same principle applies for native plants. Uh, you want to take them back into your garden and make sure they stay in the shade. Really, if you're looking for native plants, the best way to do those is to look at the plants that you like, remember where they're to, you can photograph them if you like, and then go back and collect seeds in the fall, and then plant your seeds so that way you're not tearing out native plants but uh, these are not native to the area they don't need to be in a gravel pit and now they can get a nice new home in my garden